Fibonacci is the person given credit for the Fibonacci sequence. It's Leonardo uh, Fibonacci. And he lived um, on the 11th to sometime in the 12th centuries current era. And what's really amazing is this simple sequence. If you start with zero, and you start with one after zero, and now add one and zero, add one and one, add one and two, add two and three, add three and five, etc. forever, that something beautiful happens. The golden spiral. You can see all over the place in nature. If you look closely at this drawing, we've got a tiny little square with a one, tiny little square with a one, then a square with two, then a square with three, then a square with five, then a square with eight, square with 13, 21, 34, 55, and, and it builds from there. And we want to investigate this golden spiral, this Fibonacci sequence. We can write the Fibonacci sequence recursively which means each each thing is defined by the one before it in the following way f of 0 is 0 f of 1 is 1 and f of n equals f of we're always adding the two previous, so n minus 2 plus f of n minus 1. And this is for all n greater than 1. Remember that the upside down a is for all. This is the recursive form of the Fibonacci sequence. And what we want to do is take a huge leap and go from this, this um, method of describing the terms where you have to know the previous two in order to get the next one. We want to go from that kind of form to something called a closed form. And the closed form says f of n is equal to something. And we don't have to do the seed values, and we don't have to build each n. We're, we're going to write f of n in terms of something. And to do that, we're going to look at a, a very interesting thing. So if I have the terms dot 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 I have B comma A well I know that to get to the next term I'm going to add A plus B so three terms in a row would be B A and A plus B and what I want is for See if I could write B over A. I want that to be the same as A over A plus B. I want to figure out a number or express a number so that the 
ratio of any two elements is the ratio of, of the next two elements, any other two elements. And we're going to write this letting B B1. So we've got 1 over A equals A over A plus 1. A way that you can see this geometrically is that we can take a rectangle the shorter side is B the longer side is A and we want that that ratio to be the same as the shorter side is A the longer side is A plus B which is just exactly what's shown here we have B by A and A by A plus B. Well, we know how to deal with this. We can cross multiply. So that means we have 1 times A plus 1 equals A times A. A times A, that's A squared. 1 times a plus 1 is just a plus 1, but we're trying to find a. So I've got a square. I need to put all the terms on the same side. a squared minus a minus 1. And if we think of a quadratic where the variable is little a, and I'm going to write it this way. We've got a quadratic the first number is a times a squared plus b times a plus c. So I'm going to use capital letters for our a, b, and c and we can now use the quadratic formula without getting too uh, confusing, confused. So a is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And what are a, b, and c? Let's see. Capital A is 1. Capital B is negative 1. And capital C is also negative 1. Okay. So A is negative negative 1 plus or minus negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. Two times one. Negative negative one is one. Negative one squared is one. Negative four times one is negative four. Times negative one is positive four. And one plus four is five. So we get that little a. Our goal number is 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4. That's 5 over 2. And we usually say that the primary value uses the plus because if we use the minus, square root of 5 is bigger than the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. 1 minus 2 is a negative number. 
And we want to think of this ratio, this goal ratio, as a positive. So if we just think of the positive numbers, then we're going to call this A phi, which is the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And that closed form of the Fibonacci sequence is 1 over the square root of 5 times alpha to the n, there's an n, minus beta to the n, where alpha is our primary 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and beta is the minor 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. So the two roots of our polynomial are the alpha and the beta. And this is weird. But we're going to use mathematical induction to show that this closed form is correct. Cool. Very, very cool. All right. Recall that mathematical induction the first thing we need is to write f of n. And we just did that. f of n is 1 over the square root of 5, alpha n minus beta n. And we're going to remember that alpha is the positive root and beta is the negative root. And mathematical induction says that we need to do a basis step, and then we need to have a, an induction hypothesis, and then we need to do an induction step. And this is a very important point for, for this particular example. The way that we were constructing the Fibonacci sequence elements was by adding the two preceding ones. So we needed to have two seed values to create one. That means that we'll have two bases elements and two parts of our induction hypothesis. Groovy. Let's look at the basis. First, We want to show that f of 1 is true. And I've got, yes, right here. Let's write down these first elements. So the 0th is 0, then 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1. Oh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, dot, dot, dot. So our first f of 1 is 1. Okay. f of 1, let's write down our rule. f of 1. So that means I'm going to let these ends be 1s. 
So 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the n minus, oh, to the to the 1, because 1 is 1, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the 1. Hey, this is cool. So let's go ahead and look at, let's see, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the 1 is just 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. So I've got common denominator, so 1 plus square root of 5. And now I've got to be super careful with SIGNs, with signs. Negative times 1 is negative 1. And a negative times this second negative is positive. So we distributed that negative. So I've got 1 plus the square root of 5. This 1 minus 1. Those are going to add away. And square root of 5 plus square root of 5. So we're going to get... Square root of 5 plus square root of 5 is 2 times the square root of 5. We still have a 2 in the denominator. These 2's divide out. That gives us square root of 5 over square root of 5. The square root of 5's divide out. We get 1. So if f of 1 is 1, we're golden. And yay, f of 1 is 1. So that's awesome. We need to show that this also works for f of 2. We need two seeds for this process. So we've got f of 2, and this is our second basis. So if n is 2, we have 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 squared, because now we're n is 2 minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 squared. So it looks like we need to see what does 1 plus the square root of 5 squared look like and what does 1 minus the square root of 5 squared look like. So we'll have 1 over the square root of 5. The denominators squared are both 4. And to see our numerators, let's square 1 plus the square root of 5. So first thing squared, plus first times second times 2, plus second thing squared. That gives us 1 plus 2 square root of 5 plus 5. And 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 2 square root of 5. One minus square root of 5 squared. It'll be the same thing. One this Square root of 5 is now negative. So we'll have 
1 minus 2 square root of 5, still plus 5, and that'll give us 6 minus 2 square root of 5. So let's put this up here, 6 minus 2 square root of 5. Again, we're going to distribute the negative that is in the middle. That means that 6 becomes negative, and the negative 2 square root of 5 becomes positive. We've got a common denominator already. Six minus six, the sixes go away. We have the square root of two times the square root of five plus two times the square root of five. So that's four times the square root of five and check it out. Fours divide out. We're left with square root of five over square root of five. The square root of fives divide out. We're left with one. What is f of 2? What is the third or the second? The second number. Let's see. Let's see. The first is 1. The second is also 1. Oh, my gosh. Yay. Okay. So both basis values work. And now... For the induction hypothesis, we're going to assume two things are true. We're going to assume P of K is true and P of k minus 1 is true. So the two preceding, the p of k is true, and the, the guy right behind p of k, which is p of k minus 1, that's also true, because we're going to need to add these to build p of k plus 1. All right, well, p of k, that says... And this is f of k. Sorry about that. So f of k is 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k. And f of k minus 1 be the same thing with k minus 1 instead of k. So we've got 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1 minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. Okay, great. We're assuming that these are both correct, and we want to show our induction step. We want to show The f of k plus 1 really is equal to f of k plus f of k minus 1. If this is true, if this relationship is true, then the, the property, the basic property of the Fibonacci sequence holds and our closed form is correct. So. 
somewhere off to the side, let's write down what it's going to look like for f of k plus 1. So yeah, 1 over the square root of 5. 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k plus 1. Wow, it's hard to see how, how we're going to get k plus 1 powers from, oh, let's just, let's just write it down. Let's see what we've got. So f of k is 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k, minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k. This is the f of k part, and then plus f of k minus 1, 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1, minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1, and close. And hey, I just noticed something. This 1 over square root of 5 is just multiplied through. So I can write this as 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the k, minus 1 over the square root of 5, 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k, plus 1 over the square root of 5, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1 minus 1 over the square root of 5 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1 Well, this isn't too bad. Let's look at the first and third terms and the second and fourth terms because I've got some common things. And it's easy to see that every term has a 1 over square root of 5. I'm going to pull that forward and kind of ignore it for a little while. So in looking at the first and third I can see I've got k minus 1 of them common. So I've got 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. The k's has one more. So 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and then plus 1 because I just factored out this common k minus 1. And then we've got the two second terms, so 1 over the square root of 5. This time, the common factor between these two terms is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. Hmm. And what's left? I've got 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the 1, because I pulled k minus 1 of them out. And then I factored out a negative, so this sign between them will be plus, and then I have 1, because I took this entire thing out as something common. Well, it's not too bad. It's kind of horrible, but not too bad. 
So I've got 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to k minus 1. And let's, if we want to add these two, we need to multiply 1 by 2 over 2. So 1 plus the square root of 5 plus 2 over 2. Hmm, is that right? One plus square root. The, the 1 is going to be 2 over 2. Yeah, okay. And then minus 1 over the square root of 5. 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. And this is 2 over 2. So it's going to be the same kind of thing. One, uh, 1 minus the square root of 5 plus 2 over 2. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. So I can write this with this 1 over square root of 5 up front. And I've got 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1, 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2, minus, because there's that minus, 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1, and then I've got 1 plus 2, that's 3, minus square root of 5 over 2. And if, let's just think, let's look at where we wrote down what k plus, f of k plus 1 looks like. I think we wrote it down somewhere. Let's see. So I'm, maybe I didn't. Let's, let's do it now. F of k plus 1 will look like 1 over the square root of 5. This is if everything works. And then we'll have 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k plus 1. So the reason why I wanted to look at that is to see how far away we are from our goal. So I remember algebra. I've got 1 over the square root of 5. I'm going to write this as 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1. To get up to k plus 1, I've got to add 2. So 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 squared. And then same thing here. Minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 to the k minus 1 times 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 squared, which means that if if 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 squared is 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and if 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 squared is 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2, then we're done. Okay, all right, we can taste it. It's going to be okay. So we're working from both ends, but uh, it's kind of okay. So we have 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 squared. I'm going to bring this 1 half of the... the two in the denominator out front 
and it's squared, so the one-fourth. And now we can just look at this binomial and square it. One squared plus first times second times two. Plus the square root of five squared. So we've got one fourth. One squared is one. Two square root of five. Five. One plus five is six. Hey, I've got a common factor of two in this binomial. Let's pull that out. If I factor a two out, I'll be left with three. If I factor a two out of the second term, I'll be left with one, square root of five. So this two is here, and I still have one fourth. So do you see what I did? I've got that one-fourth, and I factored out. I did 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Square root of 2, uh, 2 times the square root of 5, divided by 2 is square root of 5, and the 2 came out. And 2 over 4 is indeed 1 half. 1 half. 3 plus the square root of 5. And is that what we had? Let's look. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Yes! So the first one worked. And now we want to see what is 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 squared. Let's do the same kind of move. Let's take the 2 squared out front, and that'll be 1 fourth. And then we're squaring the binomial in the numerator. So 1 squared, 2 times the first, times the second, the second squared, okay, so that's 1 fourth, 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, times negative square root of 5 is negative 2 square root of 5. And negative square root of 5 squared is 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 minus 2 square root of 5. Again, we'll have a common factor of 2. That'll leave us with 3 minus square root of 5. 3 minus square root of 5. We'll pull out a 2, so we'll have 2 over 4, or 1 half. Yes! Oh my gosh. So it really does work. Yay! So, we'd say, quod erat demonstratum. So that means, let's look at a pretty version of it. Somewhere I have it. <laughs> that means that I wrote it with a small f, but I like it better with a capital F. That this is indeed a closed form for the Fibonacci sequence. Again, a closed form means. I just say, I want the 12th term, and I plug 12 in instead of n, and I get the 12th term. I don't have to know what the 11th and the 10th ones were and add them together to, get, to create the 12th. All right, well, this is sort of an introduction. This is indeed, not sort of, this is indeed an introduction into the Fibonacci sequence into the golden ratio, into 
sequences that are defined recursively and sequences that are defined in a closed form. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Bye.